The website we're going to be utilizing for the thermal images this year is called airscout.com. So if we type this in here. Okay, one thing to notice is that we are using Google Chrome to access this. Uh, we found that seems better than Internet Explorer. Uh, everything comes in formatted correctly, and, and we haven't had any issues with that as, so far. When this loads, you'll notice over here on the right-hand screen, there's a login. We can click on there, and you're going to enter in your username and password. The same username and password that we were talking about using on the the Air Scout app as well. So it's it's a cross-reference password. You want to guard that, that username and password uh, because anybody who gets that would have access to all of your images. All right. So I'll type in my username and password, and we'll log in. All right. So here it logged in. What we notice on the, on the side is just like we saw in the app, we have a season. We can pick a year, 2013, and then as we put new ones in there, it'll have a 2013 and a 14 option. Then we have company, division, agronomist, just like before, then client, farm, field. So we'll navigate to the same folder that we did the app in. Once we do that and we click on the field, we'll notice all the images for that field show up. Okay, and there's a date on them. This is June 17th, uh, July 4th, and they're going to be in order all the way down to October. If we go through here, then we notice too these are images that we did upload um, and referenced on our on our iPad, and they do show up on this this image as well so we can download them and do whatever we need to here okay a couple things to notice first one is if they have been referenced a a shows up down here in the bottom all right you know some of these haven't some of them have all right but you can tell at a glance which ones have and have not been referenced if we want to delete any we can click this check mark right up there go to delete and actually delete that image out if we want to if we want to compare two images we can click on two different images. Say, say we're going to do this image here, and then we go to one taken about three weeks later, and we hit compare, and then they show up both of those side by side, June 17th, 1st, uh, July 23rd. And on the thermal images, when we put our mouse over it, we do get a magnifying glass. So if we want to look at a certain area, come out here, we can actually zoom in on it, and we can go back and look at those same areas to see if there's any changes, any differences, watch it as it compares from one to the other. The other thing we've noticed to use this for is put the thermal image over here and put the color photo over here. And when you see discrepancies, you can also then look at the color photo to see if those same, same things exist, uh, if you can identify what they are. Easy way to compare them back and forth. We're done. Hit the done up here in the top right corner. Take us back to this screen here. All right. Also from this screen, if I select any images, one or multiple ones, then I can go up here to export. From the export, I can export as a KMZ, GeoTIFF, GeoJPEG, or JPEG. Um, I select which one I want. I can hit OK, and then it's going to go ahead and start a download of that. So I can close out of that, and I see them show up right here. So these are the two fields that I chose. Now, currently right now, they're given uh, their field, their picture ID numbers, uh, not the field numbers, so you will have to rename these as you download them uh, if you want those numbers to make any sense for it. So be careful with that. Uh, it may be easier as of right now to download one image at a time so you can keep them separated when you go to rename them. Now, if we just click on one of these images, just like that, it shows up, we can see that full image, and then we can go to map or edit. If we go to map, we can actually reference the image if we want to. If you do not have Google Earth installed, a Google Earth plugin on your browser, you will probably get a pop-up now that tells you to install. Go through the process to download the install and actually put it in there. It's already been installed on this one, so that image goes ahead and load. Now I can use the 
the wheel of my mouse. Zoom up or down here. And once I click inside that image, I can use it to zoom in and in and out on the image. And we notice it's it's referenced, it's placed right over top, pretty much where it needs to be. If that, if that wasn't the case, we could actually re-reference this image. What we do is scroll back up here and go to Align. And with the Align, I can use this and zoom in on this area where I think I need to be. And now I'm going to click points. So I'm going to click one point down here in this corner, one point right up here in this corner. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click those same, same spots that they represent over here. And then I hit save. It'll tell me this field was successfully aligned. And now it will resume into that area with the field aligned just as I did it. Right. I was a little bit off there. I didn't quite get the spots right. We see it. We're drifting a little bit as we go far out. But that is a way to do it. All right. If we're satisfied with it, we can hit done. And we come back to this screen. We'll review the map. Go up here to hit edit. And if we click on edit, it'll bring up another screen for us. And now we can actually edit our legend. So this is shown from 33 to 42 degrees Celsius. If we grab this slider, we can actually slide it to see whatever temperatures we want. So we just want to watch 42 to 55. Uh, we can go back and forth to highlight different areas in the field. Then we can also, if we move right to the edge, we can grab this and make this slider bar skinnier or fatter to cover more or less area within a single scale. We can get it referenced however we want. Then we go up here to save and it will replace the image we had with the new image. And now, not only is it viewable on the web, but it will replace that image on our iPads, iPhones as well. So that way we could go out and if we are doing this to target a certain area within the plot, within say a plot or something like that or get a certain zone to show up more extreme we can do that then use our iPads iPhones to navigate to that area All right. so we can compare we can export we can delete and then if we click on the image itself we can align it and we can change the scale it works relatively easy hope you enjoyed it